Come on. Let go, you bitch.
Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1968 Volkswagen Fastback, also known as Ruby. And as you can tell by the cold introduction, I ripped that motor out of that chassis. And the reason why is because I have a loose cylinder head on the left-hand side. The symptoms include when you start it up and you give it a rev, you can hear the head go brrrr. It's actually like a metallic clunking sound. And as the engine warms up, it goes away because of course the metal parts expand and the problem disappears. But I noticed that uh, it's suddenly getting worse. So this is something I need to address. I should not have ever been driving it with a loose head. I figured it's time that I should pull the engine out and properly retorque the head and hopefully I haven't pulled out any of the cylinder head studs. And uh, that's a very common problem amongst these uh, old Volkswagen engines once they overheat. And this engine has been overheated before um, by the previous owner for certain and by me because the bellows, the big rubber thing that you saw me pull out, which normally goes on here, actually one of the clamps fell off of it at some point, uh, right after I had put the engine back in about a year or two ago. And the rubber would suck itself closed as you rev the engine up. So I got it home and I noticed my oil light started to flicker as soon as I pulled in the driveway and I quickly turned it off. And as I got out, I smelled the engine being extremely hot and I knew something was wrong. Anyway, I discovered the bellows sucked themselves closed, I fixed the problem, and the engine never overheated again. The overheating problem that was happening over on the other side, when I was doing the uh, air temperature testing in the engine compartment about a year ago, that was actually due to the heater box overheating on the right-hand side, not so much the cylinder head, it was actually the heater box. There is a certain amount of air that does need to go through those to keep the heater boxes cool. Otherwise, they essentially, they trap heat and they can cause your engine to overheat. But um, I can't say the engine itself overheated, but that heater box, whoo that thing sure did get hot. Anyway, that's been fixed. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the tins off of both sides. We're gonna pull out the rockers. We're gonna go ahead and torque down the heads properly. We're gonna put everything back together, reset the valve lash, put the engine back in the car and get it running. Now, as you saw in about real time, I think I had the engine out in about 15, 20 minutes. And I've got that down to a science on this. In fact, I've actually made it a little bit easier because the fourth engine bolt, which is the one that everybody leaves out, I turned it around backwards so that way the nut actually faces into the engine compartment so I can loosen the nut from there rather than having to go around from the transmission bell housing side. Why Volkswagen didn't do that is anybody's guess, but I simplified it and uh, made it better. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start getting to work. After I finish up my beverage, of course. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and pluck that dingle belly that you see down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to hit me up on social media, check out duckshit.net, right up here in the corner of the screen. Uh, when you visit that site, you'll find not only my mailing address, but you'll find all the links to all of my different social media accounts. So if you'd like to get in contact with me somehow, ask me a question, you've certainly got a lot of ways to do it. And as always, if you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks a lot. We'll be back.
shit.
Well, looking at the top here, I expected there to be like grass and dirt and rats nests and shit in there. And actually, they're quite clean. There's just a little bit of grass in there. I mean, almost, almost nothing. Really nothing to speak of. That is excellent. That means that engine was probably cooling like it's supposed to. But now we have our top cylinder head bolts exposed. Okay. I'll let go. There you go. I suspected that would drip a little. That's why I put a rag down below. We're gonna pop out these set of rockers in here. Everything's nice and clean in here. It doesn't look like the oil has been baked into it, which is usually what happens in these engines. The oil doesn't get changed properly, or the uh, oil is uh, allowed to overheat and actually burns itself into the head. This actually looks really good. It actually looks quite clean. Okay, let's go ahead and pull them rockers out. Rockers look to be in good shape. Everything's nice and snug on there. Nothing sloppy. This is uh, this is good news. Fantastic. Hey, right, put the rockers in the safe spot. All right, getting ready to torque this sucker down. These are 10 millimeter studs on here, and I verified that by putting a 10 millimeter wrench over the threaded part. These are not eights, so these actually do get tightened a little tighter than the standard. As I was telling Carlos the other day, I don't try to remember my torque specifications, so I keep a cheat sheet as to the torque order you're supposed to do, as well as the torque specifications on it. I slip this in my toolbox, it's convenient. Anyway, we're going to snug everything up to 7 foot-pounds and make sure that they're set for that, and then we'll jump up to uh, 23 foot-pounds in this order. Alright, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, here we go for 7. Specification says start here. Alright, 7. Seven. These are not very tight at all. Yeah, it's seven. As soon as I hit seven, the, the bolts start to budge. So I think my diagnostic based on the sound was probably quite accurate. Ooh, cylinder head temperature sensor right here is in the way. Let's see if we can wind that out. Oh, it's not a 12 or it's a 13. This is not even used on this engine. This was part of uh, the former fuel injection system that was on here. So I can probably leave this off as long as it doesn't leave a gaping hole in the head. We're gonna find out in just a second. It doesn't look like it leaves a hole in the head. In fact, it's all dry. All right. That was seven. All right, set it with 23. All right, new pattern. This is number one. Oh yeah, these were way loose. Torqued. Number two. These suckers are way loose. Here we go. Four, five over here. Yeah, these were unbelievably loose. That one was tight. Seven and eight. Yeah, the top two on the outside here actually weren't too far off. Um, the rest of them were <laughs> very, very far off. Okay. Let's put our rockers back in. We're not going to set the valve lash yet. We're going to actually run around the other side and set up the, uh, the cylinder head uh, bolts on that side, make sure they're torqued down properly. All right, meanwhile, we'll throw the rockers back in there and put the cover back on it to keep the dirt out. So, here we go. 
This should look very, very familiar to Carlos. Why somebody killing a kid? <laughs> You're doing it wrong. All right. One washer. One bolt. I should say one nut. I always use the nut and bolt terms interchangeably, even though I do know the difference. I'm just... Yeah, I guess it's a mental thing. I have a problem with the words. <laughs> Everything in these heads actually looks really good. Really clean, too. I mean, despite being covered in oil. Nothing looks burnt, dirty, broken, worn. At least this side, anyway. Why won't this thread on here? I think there might be a little burr on the end of the thread. Let's see if I can gently turn it past. Yeah, that was it. Just a little booger on the end of the threads. I gotta look up the torque spec on this again. I don't try to remember that. We're good over here. Let's put this cover back on temporarily just to keep the dirt out while we work on the other side. Okay. up get that washer off one on the other side too I like to remove these washers before I pull the intake manifold up all the way so that when you lift it they don't fall down and in all right carburetor is off Very foolishly, I did that work without dropping something down in the intake ports. One of those screws could have very easily fallen down in there. Noticing in here, um, these things are absolutely clean. Except for a little bit of fuel spilled into them from me uh, moving the carburetor around, but uh, there's no soot inside of them at all. Which tells me the valves are doing what they're supposed to, nothing's hanging open. Both sides are like that. All right, good. Let's continue taking these screws out. Got one way over here. There's uh, one way down under, underneath here. Interesting, it's facing the wrong direction. The one on the other side faced backwards, this one faces forwards. Okay. And lastly, we've got one more screw up in here.
Okay, and I think this thing will lift off now. Oh, missed one. Did miss one. There's another one back here I didn't even see. comes off. Look at that. A little bit of dirt inside of there, not too much. And up on top of here, this side's a little greasy. I'm going to spray a little bit of degreaser on that and try to clean that up because grease will inhibit the um, cooling air from carrying away the heat from the cylinder heads. In other words, I'm acting like an insulator. So this is really greasy on this side and there was an oil leak on top of the engine before, which I had cleaned up. And I didn't realize that it had done this on the inside because I never popped these covers off. But yeah, we will degrease this and let it sit while we're doing the other work. All right. The cooling is not as important at the bottom as it is on the top. That's why the fins get so thin on the bottom. Wow, look at that. The grease is already disappearing off of it. All right, when we get done with this, I'm actually gonna degrease the whole damn engine. This is just a good thing to do. Spray a little on the other side here while I'm over here. This side didn't really need it, but a little bit ain't gonna hurt nothing. Okay, looking good. Go ahead and lay a rag on the ground because this valve cover might drip. Pop that cover off. There we go. Looking pretty good on the inside on this side too. This is the first time I've really seen this in, in daylight to really get a good look in it. The last time I took this engine apart, I didn't get into all this stuff. Usually I did the valve adjustments when it's underneath the car and of course you're limited on light. But again, this is looking really, really clean on the inside. Really clean. Okay. This spark plug doesn't look like it's threaded in right. It looks like it might have a cross-threading issue here. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's not going down into that head completely straight. Not like this one is. All right, we're going to evaluate that while we got this all disassembled, too, and figure out just exactly what the hell's going on there. But while we're here, let's go ahead and... Pull out our rockers. There's a washer on each side, so make sure we don't drop them. Pull them washers out. Here we go. Put that up here where it's safe. Put the rocker up and out of the way. All right, once again, seven foot-pounds. Got our cheat sheet. I'm gonna do them in this order. And I hear Skeeter getting abused. I will be right back. All right, false alarm on Skeeter. She was just making noise, trying to get her brother in trouble. She'll do that. <laughs> I gotta watch her sometimes because I hate to uh, reprimand Boomer when Boomer hasn't done anything wrong. All right, we are currently set to seven foot-pounds, and in this order right here, got seven, 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 seven. These are much tighter than the other side was. Seven and seven. All right, wind us up to 23. 23. And we got a different torque pattern for the final torque. All right, number one, right here, 23. Oh, that's loose too. Come on now, there it is. That was actually really loose. Tighter than the other side, but still loose. That one was correct. This one's loose. All right, 
this engine's gonna be much tighter than it was. Let's try that again. Here we go. I heard a cracking sound. I wasn't sure if it was the bolt just breaking free or if it was the uh, clicking torque bar. Let's see. There it is. Get this one too. Got it. Got one more over here. All right, and then the last one. All right, this engine is, uh, as they say in German, guten tight. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wind out this spark plug and find out exactly why that looks like it's cross-threaded. I wonder if somebody re-drilled the hole or something. Something funny is going on here, I don't know what. But we're about to find out. And that guy walking down the street was just smoking weed. He smells like a fucking skunk just sprayed all over his ass. <laughs> Well, I thought about it again, and before we get into uh, pulling that spark plug out, in case we drop any shrapnel down below here, I don't know what's going to come out, but no sense in getting it down into our uh, our valve train here. Let's go ahead and hook these things back up. snugged not torqued down properly and the valves are not yet set go ahead and throw this cover back on here all right all right let's attack that spark plug next all right let's see what we got in here Huh, feels normal as I'm threading it. It is, it's out. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. It's got a, uh, a, uh, what do they call that? A damn nut thing that screws over. Goes into a cylinder head when somebody stripped it out. Uh, somebody must have, um, re-drilled the hole to the spark plug and didn't do it straight. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. The threads don't look like they're messed up. But they are definitely um, <laughs> on an adapter here. All right, well, I'm just gonna thread it back in. Since it was done crooked, it was still, it's still done. It's still threading in there properly and it's not falling out. So I have to call it good. Yeah, there's no fixing that without welding the head. And if I'm gonna do that, I gotta take the engine all apart. Well, before somebody goes and calls me out and tells me that I don't cover the oil cap hole <laughs> before I spray water on the engine, there it is. All right, this is the intake fan here for the cooling air. And uh, some asshole <laughs> online actually went and told me that he could hear my cooling fans being loose. Now, these things make a terrible racket when they're loose. And obviously, they're tight. There's the um, fan that's on the outside, and there's an impeller on the inside, and neither one of them is loose. So I need not worry about those at all. I'm just going to leave them alone as they are. They're fine. As I said, these things make a terrible, terrible racket when they come loose, and that's not the case here at all, so we're going to leave that be. Okay, I've got everything sprayed down here, uh, hosed down with some degreaser. I've got everything capped off that uh, looked like it was going to get important or places where you don't want water to get into it, like down to the cylinder heads, into the oil input, uh, down into the uh, generator cooling output port. Uh, up in the front here, I don't worry too much about that. I'm going to try not to get water in there, but if a little bit gets in there, nobody's going to die. Uh, I think it's ready to go. It's been soaking for about 20 or 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and get this thing hosed. Here we go.
All right, well, I got about two hours to put all this back together, and uh, I don't think I'm going to do it. What's actually going to happen is I'm going to be leaving in a little while to go to a movie, and that means um, if I rush through this, I might get it done. But if I don't, I can actually take these cylinder head tins and get them painted, and I think that's probably a better idea. So I'll get some paint on them, and then tomorrow we'll reassemble this thing and put it back in the car. It should go together pretty quickly. There'll be a second part to this video, and I think you guys have enjoyed this one already. If you like my new concept of going with the cold intro, where I start doing the work, and then later on do my monologue, you know, let me know. And as always, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Pluck that dingle belly, that way you get updates every time that I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net up here in the corner of this video. That way you too can see all of my social media links and you can find my mailing address. If there's a product or something you would like for me to review in one of my videos, we'll do it here. So as always, if you like emailing, duckmancycles.duckshit.net and you take care and we will see you later.